Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nubraids, where today we have not only new area bonuses, we're going to talk about those first, but also some pretty substantial rebalances to existing champions. It's going to make you pretty happy if you own those champions, let me tell you. One of them being a mythical. But anyway, let's dive into the new area bonuses first. Let's look at this. Area bonuses available in the Great Hall be updated to include new game modes and dungeons. This is cool, you know, it was a question I had when... Uh, the area bonuses first came out like i heard some of the dungeons excluded doesn't make sense but they're actually going even further than that so the area bonuses right now obviously it's part of your great hall you've got these ones so far now we don't know what grade they're going to be obviously like a grade one uh, is much cheaper than a grade two which is much cheaper than a grade three we don't know the grading but iron twins fortress sand devils necropolis phantom shoguns grove Faction Wars, Doom Tower, and Curse City are all going to be uh, joining this great hall now, which is pretty massive. So, in my opinion, right away, I would say, you know, I would say don't do Doom Tower. That's a bad idea, right? Uh, sorry, no, not Doom Tower. I, I probably would say that, though, as well. I say don't do Faction Wars. I'd say probably don't do Doom Tower either. I think those two are relatively easy content i would be tend to be skipping those even phantom shogun's grove i would tend to say no like again you can you can check it out i've got a whole video on the channel i think i've got several videos on the channel actually like making this team but like you know four rare champions and then i've got a burner you could use drexthar you could use ninja would be best if you've got them right it, it, it's really not hard to do phantom shogun's grove it's a very specific speed tune build but it's not that hard. Um, so I would be kind of saying, don't do those. However, these other ones, Iron Twins Fortress. This is a maybe, right? When you're earlier in the game, Iron Twins Fortress can be really hard. Now you can cheese it with unkillable teams, etc. And it's not the best return on your book. Uh, it's a lot of energy for not a lot of rewards. But at the same time, souls are really important these days. They're just buffing souls more and more. I think about half your soul stones probably still do come from maybe slightly less, maybe 40% now, probably still come from Iron Twins Fortress. It is quite a lot. So if you're approaching the end game, I think this becomes more valuable to do if you can't beat Iron Twins Fortress. Some points into the Great Hall to make your team tankier or whatever. That might be okay. Sand Devil, actually, I'm likely to put some points in here, right? Getting some ignore defense. Uh, yeah, basically ignore defense, maybe crit damage for that one is pretty big for nuking him down and killing him a bit more easily. We were seeing that on stream yesterday, right? <laughs> that I'm slightly lacking the gear um, on my newts because I don't have a reho. I need kind of better gear than someone with a reho would need. I'm using Romantu instead. But we were struggling a little bit. Uh, if, if too many debuffs got resisted to have enough damage, I think you slap on some ignore defense. And that becomes really not a problem anymore. So that's kind of nice. And then Cursed City for me is the big one, right? Cursed City is ridiculously hard. Again, I have never finished Soul Cross. I, th I don't think I probably could have ever finished Soul Cross. Like it's pretty, it's pretty tough. <laughs> um, it's pretty, I've gotten fairly far. I mean, there's definitely, I could definitely beat probably I think this stage, this rotation, like it's probably doable. Oh, I think I gave this a bit of a go and it was a pain in the ass. Like that's the thing with Cursed City is that, I'll be honest, Soul Cross, I'm happy doing half of it. Like, I like coming over here for this hard fire night because it gives you, like, an eternal soul stone. And that's pretty big. But a lot of these stages, even some of these earlier stages, S8, this rotation, anybody? Miserable stage. Uh, they're just not fun, really. They're too difficult. They're just too tedious. It takes so long and so much regearing and silver and time. Kind of not worth it. Uh, so... I, I do think that this will help, though, right? You can be surprised sometimes how much just a big chunk of raw stats makes a difference, and you can just brute force stuff. So I think Cursed City is a fairly high-priority thing to do. I, I think it is. Um, like I said, I think a little bit in the regular dungeons just to give you a bit of a boost, right, to make stuff a bit easier. That's totally fine. Fire Knight, you know, upping the speed on that, that's fine, right? Make it a bit better, whatever. I, I've thrown in a few little bits here and there. For me, Hydra is still one of the main ones, uh, but I think Curse City now becomes pretty decent, as well, especially the lower levels where, you know, the lower levels are a lot cheaper. You can, for a fairly low price, let's say you get a fairly big chunk of crit damage, ignore defense, and Sand Devil, probably Curse City. So that's quite good. 
Coming over to the champion balance changes, then we've got three champions with massive changes. Uh, and you can see, I, I'm not joking. I'm saying he's massive changes. Like, look at this. Look at this amount of text. It's huge. Little Miss Annie is the first one. Um, I, I She's very niche right now. She has massive single target damage. Um, you know, so so she can just like delete someone with play date, but that's about all she can do. Uh, hard to keep her alive, right? She can buff increase attack, but they need a shield on. So like, yeah, you can rock it against a duchess or something, but it's a bit awkward. I've used her a bit. I think I've done some live arena videos, I think on her before, but she's getting a nice, nice buff. With the upcoming changes, Little Miss Annie can become your reliable single target nuker for the arena. We've removed the conditionals for both her A2 and A3 to make her kit more consistent and reliable, and also added the possibility to self-buff with Revive on Death to ease the utility of her passive. We also boosted the probabilities of Magical Heart passive and added decreased defense debuff conditional to utilize her updated A1. Her A1 now has a chance to land decreased defense debuff to boost her and her allies' damage. So her A1, pretty nails, triple hitter. Each hit has a 50%, we'll check the books and stuff, chance for heal reduction, and now decreased defense as well. So obviously with the polymorph change, this is just a positive thing, I suppose, right? If you place heal reduction, bam, you've triggered the polymorph check, a second debuff doesn't matter. At the same time, it's very unlikely that you're building her with any accuracy whatsoever. She comes with zero accuracy baseline. So uh, yeah, I mean, this is, it's going to have a chance to land for sure against maybe damage dealers, um, but uh, it's tough. Like any tankier champions running stone skin are probably gonna get too much resistance. You'd have to watch out for five-star champions with resistance. But yeah, so her A1 is now a triple hit with each each hit actually, that's kind of big. This might actually make her usable in more areas than just this. Every hit will have a 75% chance of putting heal reduction and decreased defense. That could even make her pretty decent for Fire Knight hard, like, you know? Triple hit, decreased defense champ. That's that's uh, actually kind of interesting. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. I mean, you've got three chances, even in Arena. Like, you smack a Harima a few times. And cool. Um, her A1, by the way, her A1 doesn't hit super hard. Uh, so, yeah, the decreased defense actually could be kind of nice, right? To kill someone past an ultimate death knight. Anyway, Hello Doll. Let's read the rest of her kit, and then we'll talk about it all together, because there's so many changes. Hello doll, attack one enemy two times. Before attacking, puts increased attack on the champ for two turns, ignores 25% defense, and puts perfect fail on this champion for two turns, fills the turn meter by 30%. This is a massive change. So it's just everything happens just by default. So before it did all of this, but you get increased attack if they're under shield, you ignore defense if they were under shield. You got perfect fail if you killed an enemy and turn meter if you did not kill an enemy. Now you get everything. So this is a massive self buff. This move is actually really good. And by the way, here's a big thing. It has a two turn cooldown. So she can permanently maintain increased attack and perfect veil on herself, which is pretty big. The turn meter boost is nice, especially for a single target damage dealer. The ignore defense is really nice as well. So yeah, man, that's a massive, that's a massive buff. This makes her A2 way, 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 way better. And that's the ideal way. That's how I was playing Little Masani in Arena, was throwing her in when they had a tanky team. And I might have struggled to get increased attack on my team, right? Throw Little Masani in. She's, let's say it was a Duchess or something. She self-buffs to increase attack, maybe even kills the Duchess or something like that. And then she can pick off their other reviver with play date in the second turn. You know, something like that could work. Now she's much, much more flexible. Um, yeah, I, I think, re I mean, reliably self-buffing, increase attack, perfect fail is pretty good. She'll still fall over at a stiff breeze uh, from, you know, AoE attacks. But if they're relying on single target or ally attacks and she's hiding behind a veil, it's actually kind of nice. Play date then, attacks one enemy, ignores 25% defense, destroys max HP by 25%, the damage inflicted, repeats the attack if they have higher defense and max HP than this champion. So this move absolutely slams. Also puts Revive on Death on this champion for two turns if it kills an enemy. So I think that's the only change. Yeah, the only change is, yeah, just cool. It gives her Revive on Death if she kills an enemy. It's a four turn cooldown. No, okay, that's not a huge deal, but it does interact with her passive. The passive uh, Magical Heart, each hit 
Let, let me scroll it down a bit. Each hit, my, my man buns in the way. 50% chance to decrease the target's turn meter by 10%, and a 100% of destroying max HP by 10% when attacking enemies under heal reduction or decreased defense buffs, debuffs. Also heals this champ by 10% the damage inflicted when attacking enemies under heal reduction or decreased defense debuffs. That's quite intriguing. I mean, you look at her for Hydra. For Hydra, she now provides... She would become a mischief target, unfortunately, but she provides herself a perfect veil, so she won't be feared. Increase attack. She's going to bring a decreased defense. She'll keep herself alive with healing as well. Interesting stuff. Yeah, so they've made that magical heart, this passive, better. So it's still a 50% chance, right? Yeah, it's still a 50% chance to decrease the turn meter, but now it's 10%, not 5. Uh, you destroy their max HP by 10%, not 5. You heal by 10%, not 5. It's still a little bit awkward, right? Like in Arena, are you really going like, wow, I, I landed heal reduction on them and now I'm going to heal by 10%. Like, yay, this is a game changer. No, certainly not. But for something like, you know, Fire Knight and stuff like that, that's actually okay, right? For bosses, that's not bad. Um, yeah, I mean, the turn meter pushback is, again, it's unreliable, but it's kind of cool. There you go. Again, the revive on death is this. It's cool. When she gets revived, um, she gets a 25% turn meter boost from revive on death. She gets a 50% max HP shield. It's not much, but it gives her a chance to stay alive. And then she also attacks the enemy that killed her with her default skill. So that's nice. If they have a squishy nuker and it kills her, and let's say you, you either revive her or she's given herself her new revive on death, when she pops back up, she'll A1 them. And, you know, against a squishy champion, especially if she lands that decreased defense now, she's got a good chance to kill them. And then she can, you know, zoom in, get her perfect veil back on. Yeah. All right, cool. So Lil Miss Annie. Positive changes all around. I certainly don't see her being top end meta by any mean, shape, or form, but uh, she's actually quite a fun little champion. So yeah, she's an inter an interesting option to say the least. Like this play date really does smack. It is a very very big single target nuke. So yeah, she could be an interesting single target option. Hmm. Yeah, that is a, a very interesting one for sure. Next up, I'm sure Scratch will be delighted by this, guys. Supreme Athel. Uh, a lot of you commented saying Supreme Athel should be buffed uh, when I did my video on voids that need a buff. And hey, I'm delighted to have three, well, champ well two of them are voids. Uh, one is mythical, but three champions getting substantial buffs here in this patch. Supreme Athel, she's in a weird spot, very weird spot right now. Let's see what is changing. Supreme Athel can shine at wave-based content and any other locations where you need reliable control, including PvP. We've increased her damage and added the ability to place increased accuracy buff on herself with her A3 skill, meaning Supreme Athel can now place freeze debuffs more easily, which allows you to build her with more offensive stats. Her A2 now puts freeze debuff before attacking all enemies, so she can benefit from all of her ignore effects and the addition of 20% of the target's defense ignore aims to compensate for the loss of damage against frozen opponents. So, exemplar of stoicism, damage increased, I guess that's her A1. Her A1 hits harder. How much harder? I don't know, but it hits harder. Who knows? Whole company attacks all enemies. Now, before attacking, 100% chance to freeze, and then ignore stuff. Now it ignores 20% defense. That's actually kind of big, right? So, three-turn cooldown, AoE, 100% chance to freeze before she attacks. Ignores strengthen, ally protection, unkillable. Now it's going to ignore 20% defense, right? 20% defense ignore is a massive damage increase. Um, you know, I try to talk a lot on this channel about how much damage ignore defense adds, right? It, it does a ton. Also, how strong Harima passive is by reducing ignore defense. It's a massive, massive deal. Uh, so yeah, even a small boost like 20% ignore defense, that can make a pretty big difference i think they've yeah they've also upped the damage of it so that's a double whammy it hit it number one is going to have a bigger multiplier and now it ignores 20 percent defense that's actually pretty good that's pretty good and again she can self-trigger this now right she's ignoring these buffs when they're under freeze now at least she's a chance to freeze them first i mean it's a little awkward let's say against a necret the great he puts out block debuffs you can't freeze them so there's still a lot of awkwardness but it's much better ever faithful uh, basically now gives you increased accuracy with an extra turn so simple enough she comes in turn one buffs increase attack crit rate gives her a shield and gives her increased accuracy that's cool 
You can freeze attackers when hit under shield. Again, that's easier to proc. So yeah, I mean, this champion definitely benefits from a polymorph nerf where the freezes aren't going to be as punishing. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm intrigued. I'm curious to see how hard she hits right now. <laughs> Basically, I'm curious. But like, you could run her relatively slow, preferably in like, you could even run her pretty slow in a lethal set with stone skin. If you have stone skin accessories, you throw her in, she survives the first turn with stone skin, then she buffs up, or even with bolster could work. She buffs up with the increased accuracy, and then she sort of starts slamming down. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. She'll certainly be really good for Curse City, obviously. I think she already was good for Curse City or Doom Tower. Um, yeah, again, will she come into Arena? Well, I mean, probably not. Like, Seafy is really good against Freeze. Got lots of good cleansers and block debuffs. Um, she's not totally useless, right? Buffing yourself up. Again, you can build her with 70% crit rate. Um, and yeah, she don't need to build too much accuracy on her now. She's going to be able to debuff anyway, which is nice. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. We'll have to test her to see how good she is, but uh, I'm intrigued to see uh, what's changed. Again, I think it's still the same champion, right? But she's going to hit way harder, which I think is her biggest problem, is she didn't do enough damage. So that's quite good. And finally, this is, I think, the biggest buff of them all. And it's not a surprise in a sense, because it is a mythical champion, Seek Friend the Nephilim. I think he is, broadly speaking, considered to be the weakest mythical right now. Uh, he's getting a massive buff, though. I, I don't think he's the weakest anymore. Secret the Nephilim's rebalance should help him fill the role of damage dealer in the arena or take a spot in stone skin cardinal style teams. His main form got a substantial damage increase, substantial, and with the addition of the ability to ignore 50% defense on his A3, this skill has become a wrecking machine. We've also buffed his defensive abilities by extending the duration of block damage on his stay the blade, excuse me, on his stay the blade passive and extending his block damage buff to the whole team on the alternate form A3. He is very good. So A1, all of this stuff, damage increase across the board. But now this A3 ignores 50% defense. This is extremely, extremely strong. If 20% ignore defense is good for Ethel, 50% ignore defense is insane, right? Because you get 25% from Savage. If you proc Helm Smasher, you are ignoring 100% defense. Why is this such a big deal? Free turn cooldown attacks one enemy, attacks all remaining enemies with any surplus damage if the initial target is killed, fully heals him if the initial hit kills an enemy. Who does something similar to this? And now it's ignoring 50% defense. My possibly favorite nuker in arena, single target hit ignores 50% defense, then attacks all enemies with the surplus damage. Interestingly, he cannot crit on the surplus hit, but that ignores defense. I don't, it sounds like with Seek Friend, it can crit, so it will scale off his crit damage, but it won't ignore defense. It should still be absolutely monstrous. But yeah, I mean, that's a massive buff, right? <laughs> that's a massive buff. It's going to hit so much harder single target, ignoring 50% defense baseline. And then the surplus damage becomes way bigger. Yeah, that is crazy good. Then his A2, this is going to hit harder. It resets his A3 if he kills someone. That's extremely good. Resets of all of his skills if he kills two enemies. Each crit fills his turn meter. That's kind of absurd, right? If he gets like a four-person crit, AOE, four-person crit, he kills somebody, he's going to reset his A3 and he's going to go straight into the A3. Like he's going to wipe out teams now. This is actually massive. He is a super scary, super scary damage dealer. But he is more than that. <laughs> He's more than that. Because the passive gives him block damage for two turns now. So what happens? His passive is this one. If he is going to be killed by a fatal hit, it blocks the damage and gives him block damage for two turns. Heals him up. That's massive. So two turns. He then can... Uh, yeah, so whenever his allies are dead, he takes an extra turn. This is massive, right? He transforms. He's going to carry that block damage into form two as well, which is pretty big. And then in form two, a simple change, but ridiculously good. Light of the Beyond revives all dead allies with 50% turn meter, 50% HP, and puts block damage on all allies for two turns. That is insanely good. So number one, that's a big change of wording. Buff on all allies for two turns. In game right now, on all allies, except this champion for one turn. So before this was a good revive for your team, now it's insane. This is 
maybe the best revive in the game i mean it doesn't have much turn meter with it 50 percent. well 50 percent is a standard good revive now but that is actually huge it sounds like it's just an, a block damage buff for two turns for your whole team right like he's this guy's like helicath on steroids basically um he is he's nuts this guy he's nuts it's so strong so strong and a we revive with two turn block damage like if they don't have a way to hit through block damage if they don't have some sort of buff removal that is absolutely crippling like that is so nasty to fight against and it's going to give him block damage for two turns as well which is then going to let him do a cleanse and heal allies and give them block debuffs or is a1 is an a we attack that heals kind of really good and yeah if he survives like so he switches over he revives everyone, gives himself block damage for two turns. He doesn't have to live long before he can switch back into this form and like then go in with this crazy a AoE or go in with this crazy A3. So I think I think he's looking really, really, really good, guys. I think this is one of the biggest buffs they've ever done. Like that seems crazy. I would be absolutely delighted to pull Siegfried now. I think he doesn't look crazy cool in his form one. Like he looks he looks decent. Um, Form 2, though, looks just sick. Form 2 is super cool. There's no question about that. But he's actually, I think, super strong. <laughs> he is really good. Right? He's really, really good now. It's kind of gross. <laughs> it is kind of broken. And there you go. Let me know. What do you think? Who got the biggest buff? Lil Miss Annie, Seek Friend, or uh, Supreme Athel? Would you be happy to pull any of these champions now? How would you rate them? I'm curious. And yeah, what do you think of the new area bonuses? Where are you going to be putting your points? For me, I'm probably going to get some of this Hydra stuff to like, I'm going to get this up to six and probably this up to five. Maybe get these two up to three, max out the bronze tier. And I'm going to then start pumping points into uh, Cursed City. I'm going to make that a bit easier because I cannot finish it yet. Make that a bit simpler. Here we go. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.